Class is supposed to start at 5.45. How you doing, everybody? I hear you. I hear you. How was that Tesco? What do you guys think? Any questions, comments, or concerns? You can either email me about it or share something with the class if you'd like. It's up to you. You don't have to. If you have any questions, let me know. I know several of you have emailed me about certain issues and I think I've emailed everybody back. But if I have not, just uh, give me a little while and I'll make sure to head to, uh, to answer you guys. <clears throat> but since there's no other issues or concerns about that, without further ado, I'd like to get to talking about um, chapter 3.1, okay? So in this section, we'll be talking about functions. Let's see here, okay. This is a very cool concept. So here's a function. A function f is a rule that assigns to one element in one set to another element in another set. Now, if none of that makes sense, that's all right. I have some things to define for this definition of a function to make sense. First, let's define what it means to be a set. In mathematics, we talk about a set as an abstract notion of some type of enclosed abstract entity that contains objects. So mathematicians, we think of a set as like maybe like a blob containing things inside of it. Maybe you call this A, B, C. Maybe you call this one, two, three. 
sets are just objects that contain other objects. So here's a real life example, uh, a backpack. A backpack is a set because inside the backpack, it contains things or a suitcase. A suitcase is a set because inside the suitcase, there exists items like let's say clothes and, and um, shampoo or whatnot, okay? So the thing that contains the other things is called the set. The things that are inside the set, these guys, A, B, C, one, two, three, those are the elements of the set, okay? So for instance, uh, we have like the set, a, a suitcase, and the elements of that set could be whatever's in the suitcase, uh, clothes, um, a toothbrush, you know, um, socks. All those are examples of elements of that set, okay? So, why does this even apply to mathematics? Well, we can think of the real numbers, the real line as a set. All the real numbers is a set, and the elements of this set are the numbers. So, on the real line, the number zero is an element. The number one is an element. The number negative seven is an element. Okay? Clearly, the imaginary number i, i is not an element of the real numbers. Okay? That's why in this class, we, even though we talk about i, we don't really use it after all too much. Because we only want to restrict ourselves to elements of the real numbers. Okay? So now that we've discussed that, a function f is a rule that assigns to one element in one set to another element in another set. Meaning I can create a function here. Let's say I want to send a to three. I want to send b to two. And I want to send c to one. I've created a function. Let's say I call this set X. I call this set Y. The elements that got mapped or got sent over from one set to the other set, this is what we call the domain. This set gets to be called the domain. This set gets to be called the range. Okay? So this is the function F. F maps the set X to Y. So we can say that F is a map from X to Y. Where, for instance, F of A, we've assigned it to equal three. Oh, it's a capital A, so let's stay consistent. F of B, we said that equals two. And F of C equals one. As you guys can see, this function f is basically a rule. It says, given one element here, send it and assign it to another element there. Why is this even important? Why is this even cool? Why is this even mad? Well, first of all, this is really important and really cool because now it allows numbers to change. It allows us to describe one thing that's quantifiable, meaning we can associate a number to it, to another thing that's quantifiable, meaning we can associate a number to it. Okay, so here's an example. F of, let's say here's a function F, maps the real numbers onto the real numbers, all right? So F of X, let me define it to equal X squared, okay? What this is doing is, it's taking the real numbers and sending it to the real numbers, okay? I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, so here's the domain. Here's the range. Our function f gets an element and squares it in the domain. So for example, f of zero 
will then by this definition is zero squared, which is equal to zero. So we get zero and it gets sent to zero over here. Okay. Next, let's see what happens to one. F of one, that's one squared, that's one. Well, then we get one and we send it to one. And I know what you guys are thinking, well, this is kind of trivial. Everything is being sent to itself. I wish this was a little bit more exciting, Professor Neonzi. Don't worry, it gets a little bit more exciting. A lot more exciting, actually. So let's take this number two. Where does it go? Well, f of two is two squared, which is equal to four. So we take this two, and we have to map it to the number four. You guys see that? So then let's take the number three. What is f of three? Well, by the definition of our function, f of three is three squared. So three will get mapped to itself squared. So over here, I'm gonna put nine and three will be mapped to nine. Notice that this is really what we were doing in our f of x, x table. Recall. Okay. Say this is zero. Um, one, two, three, four. And we would say f of zero is zero squared, which is zero. F of one is one squared, which is one. F of two is two squared, which is four. F of three is three squared, which is nine. It's what we do when we generate an f of x, x table. And remember, this is how we plot stuff. So here's our x, here's our y. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, we go to zero, we find zero, we put a dot. We go to one, we find one, we put a dot. We go to two, we find a four, we put a dot. We go to three, we find a nine, it'll be up here, we put a dot. What about this side? Well, let's evaluate the function for negative numbers. So we have Let's do negative one, negative two, negative three. So this here we have f of negative one, which is equal to negative one squared, which is positive one. We have f of negative two, which is equal to negative two squared, which is positive four. We have f of negative three, which is equal to negative three squared, which is equal to nine. Then we come over here, we have negative one, negative two, negative three. Negative one squared is positive one. Negative two squared is positive four. Negative three squared would be positive nine. So we go there and we put a dot and then we connect the dots here. And we get our function f of x is equal to x squared. So recall that now we've related the theory of functions to graphs using tables. Okay. Yeah, it is very cool, isn't it?
I get my signs lost in this a lot. Uh, what do you, what do you mean by that? Like negative signs. Okay, Carrie. Well, just know that a negative, whenever you square it, it becomes a positive. So the reason these are all positive numbers is because they're positive to begin with. The reason these negative inputs output positive numbers is because negative one times a negative one is a positive one. Negative two times a negative two is a positive four. And negative three times a negative three is a positive nine. Why? Why is a negative times a negative a positive? Does anybody know why a negative times a negative is a positive? Because you say so. No. Nope. There's a reason for it. Okay. Notice that on the real line, guys, anything to the right of zero is a what kind of number? Positive. Anything to the left of zero is a what kind of number? Negative. So basically, going right means it's positive, and going left means it's negative, OK? So numbers actually give you a command. When I say positive 4, I mean start at the origin and go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right. Is that not true? Uh huh. So a negative number, let's say negative 4, is a command. Start off at 0 and go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left. The only difference between positive 4 and negative 4 is that one goes to the right, one goes to the left. OK, that makes a lot of sense. Also, if I say 2 minus a 1, or let's do something more, a little bit. But let's say 3 minus a 2, that's very clear that we get a 2, right? Because we can think about 4 minus a 2 being like this, you start off on the reels. Four tells you from zero, I go to the right. One, two, three, four over here. Okay. Then minus two says, okay, from four, go back two places. One, two. And where do you land? You land at positive two. Is that not right? Yeah, so that's pretty intuitive. Adding and subtracting in terms of the real line is pretty intuitive. But why in the world is like negative two times negative three somehow equal to positive six? Does anybody know? I'm willing to take some guesses. What was the question? The question is, why is a negative times a negative a positive? That's the question. Why is a negative times a negative a positive? This was the kind of stuff in mathematics that would really piss me off. I would get really mad at this kind of stuff. Because the signs cancel out. Yeah, but why? Clearly they are canceling out, but why? Why do they cancel out? 
just some arbitrary reason. Yeah, why though? Why though? That's right. Why? I would get so angry as a student because they would be like, oh, that's just how it is. But that makes no sense. Numbers made sense to me. One, two, three, four. This made sense to me. Adding numbers positively goes to the right. That makes sense. Subtracting numbers goes to the left. That makes sense. Oh, but now when you multiply, weird stuff happens. Because think about it, like three times four, right? This is the same thing as four plus four plus four. Three times four is the same thing as adding four to itself three times. Equivalently, it's the same thing as adding three to itself four times. Is it not? Notice that this equals 12 and that equals 12. So then what about three times a negative four? This should equal a negative four minus a negative four minus a negative four, which should be the same thing as a negative three minus a negative three minus a negative three minus a negative three. Both of them equaling a negative 12. You guys follow me so far here? And can you see the orange? So, so I can see it. Good. You are following. Very good. So what's going on here when we say, all right, now what is negative three? times negative four. See before, when they were both positive, it was obvious this happens. And when one of them was negative, it was obvious that this happens. But why? Is this somehow equal to positive 12? I know you guys wondered that when you were little kids, didn't you? Who here wondered that when they were little kids? Who here was cool like me and wondered that when they were little kids? Okay, so Carrie's cool. Who else is cool? Who else is cool? Is it just Carrie? Cody's cool. Who else is cool? It's just Carrie and Cody who are cool. That's it. Only two students thought this stuff when they were kids. Okay. So I'm going to show you why this is true. We go back to the whole going to the right and going to the left for positive versus negative. Okay. Notice that positive four, one, two, three, four was over here. Okay. But negative four was one, two, three, four over here. So it seems as if negative numbers say 
if positive numbers say go to the right, then negative numbers say go opposite of right. The opposite of right is left. Okay? Right? The opposite of right is left. Does everybody agree with that? That the opposite of right is left? Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Okay. The opposite of right is left. Okay. So, notice a negative times a negative. This is saying, if I go to the right by four, that's positive four. If I go to the left by four, that's opposite four. Okay. So over here, we say that a negative four is equal to opposite right by four. Okay, so a negative sign implies opposite. Okay. So if a negative four is opposite right by four and a positive four is right by four, then what is a negative negative four? Who can write it out for me in a sentence? If four is right by four, negative four is the opposite of right by four, and negative implies opposite. What is the negative of negative four? Write it out as a sentence. Someone write it out as a sentence. No one's doing it. Well, the negative of negative four, gonna check to see if someone's done it yet. Still no. It would equal the opposite of the opposite of right by four. The negative of negative four is equal to four. We're trying to show that, Carrie, and we're about to show it. So you're close there. You're very close. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. You are so close. So look. Now, would you agree that this is the opposite of the opposite of right by four? I just replaced these symbols with words. So let's talk about what's inside the parentheses. What is the opposite of right? What is the opposite of right? Left. So this is equal to the opposite of left by four, right? Because I just changed opposite to right. I just changed opposite of right to left. Because, you know, that's true. The opposite of right is left. Yes, I see a lot of people saying that. Good. All right. So then in words, what we have here now says that, okay, now what is the opposite of left by four? So what is the opposite of left? The opposite of left. The opposite of left is what? 
right by four or right. Oh, would you look at that? We started at negative, negative four, and through logical steps, we arrived at right by four. Even though negative, negative four meant opposite, opposite right by four, which meant opposite left by four, which meant right by four. This is why a negative times a negative is a positive, because just this negative sign out here can be thought of as multiplication by a negative one. My mind is blow, blown, mind blown, yeah! Wah! Very good. <laughs> I love it when students have light bulb moments. Who else thinks that their mind is blown or had kind of a light bulb moment there? Notice four is not sacred. This is true for any number. Four was not special. My head just had a meltdown. <laughs> I can just think of Isaac's head just melting. Okay. Well, thank you very much to all the students who have verbalized how, how astonishing this result is. Why don't they teach us this in school when we were little kids? This is actually really simple of an explanation. All kids, all I know a nine-year-old would know what is the opposite of left. A nine-year-old would say the opposite of left is right. And that's all you need to know in order to know why a negative times a negative is a positive. That's literally everything you need to know to understand it. Why is it not taught to us that way? I don't understand. Um, but what I do understand is that I have a responsibility as your teacher to undo the lack of true education that you received because I take my job very seriously. Yeah, I take my job very seriously. And I know that I'm, a I'm in a position that I'll be able to help you guys because I had to suffer to understand this stuff. I had to teach this stuff to myself and it took Literally blood, sweat, and tears because I would, let's say math would make me bleed because I would get frustrated and angry and, you know, sometimes I'd punch stuff. It happens, you know. We all get mad. It just happens. This is a human reaction. So blood, sweat, and tears went into this stuff. But honestly, guys, honestly, teachers should be teaching this to students. Because now you guys see that math is not some arbitrary, arbitrary thing where it's just like, do it because I say so. No, it's a logical thing. All this stuff is just makes pure sense. It's not just like, do it because I say so. It's do it because it's correct. It's not do it because I say so. It's, it's do it because it's right. And if, you, if you're a teacher, you're a leader, and if you don't lead your students correctly you just tell them to do it because i say so because i'm the one up here and you're the one down there so you have to do what i say that's not right i don't believe in that i believe in following someone if they show justification for why i should follow them okay good so for whoever enjoyed that that's good because now you know, you can go tell all your friends why negative times a negative is a positive. All they need to know, all they need to be able to realize is that the opposite of left is right. And I'm pretty sure almost anybody knows that. <laughs> okay.
You're welcome, Carrie. All right, I'm trying to see here some examples of functions. Evaluating functions of specific values. Okay. Here's function evaluation. Okay. Four minutes left until they kick us out, isn't it? Yeah. You know, we just got to deal with the cards we're dealt with. That can be, that, that's, that's true with everything in life. You just got to deal with what you have. You'd be surprised, you know, some of the best chefs don't need a full blown five star kitchen to make a really tasty food. They can make really tasty food using a, a campfire and like just a rusty pot or something like that. So it's up to us to, to make the most of what we're given. And that, that can translate to more than just mathematics. This is everything in life. So let's give us a function f of x is equal to, I don't know, um, x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 5. OK. Function evaluation means, OK, what would the value for f of 1 mean? What does this equal? Trying to get better at writing on my left, but that question mark looks like an ear. Decent. So let's talk about what f of 1 means. Um, student, historically, as math teachers, we notice that students tend to have trouble doing this sometimes. Um, so I'm going to explain it in multiple different ways. And let me know if you still don't get it so I can explain it in a different way and in a different way and in a different way. OK? I like to explain things in a different way, different way, different way, until people get it. But sometimes we have a time limit and I have to move on. So I do everything I can, and then you have to then, the ball is in your court, you guys have to go do everything you can. So I'm going to do my part, you best believe that, OK? So f of 1 really means I replace the x inside the parentheses you see here. So I have to replace all of the x's in the equation. So what I will do here is before I write it all out, I will carve out regions for where the x's were at. OK? I carve out those regions. And you know, don't forget to put the cubed here and the squared here. All right? We carve those regions out. Then you say, what do I place in that spot that I carved out? Well, it's what gets replaced with the X. I replace the X's here with what out is my one. So I put a one here. After that, you just compute. What is three, what is a, uh, what, I mean, what is one times itself three times? That's just one. And one times itself is one minus a two, okay? Plus a one minus a five. OK, so once we find what 1 minus 2 plus 1 minus 5 is, we will indeed know what f of 1 is equal to. f of 1 is equal to the result of this stuff. OK, so notice that uh, these two combine to give me a negative 7. And then I increase that by 2. So I get a negative 5 as my result. So negative 5 is indeed what is equal to f of 1. 